Hi, welcome to Jane Malik Yoga. So I'll be sharing with you today a seasonal yin yoga practice for the season of spring. So spring is a time of new beginnings. Often we are waking from the dormancy of winter. And in yin yoga and meridian theory, it's the time of the liver and gallbladder moon. So in the practice today, I'll be sharing with you some practices to tonify and to open the flow of the energy for this springtime. So you can pause the video uh, now if you wish to go and get yourself um, a bolster if you have one or uh, folded blankets and cushions as well as blocks or books if you're at home and don't have blocks. Um, it's important to have props such as these so that we can really support our body, so that we can really relax deeply into our yin space. So I'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. So springtime, it's a beautiful season can be a very um, uplifting forward motion energy um, but it can be important through the stagnancy of winter or the dormancy to really start to open our energy again and as well as tune into um, our vision and our visions of the year ahead our personal visions as well as our collective visions for our community our family our society so it can be a wonderful season to be setting an intention and we can then take that intention into our yoga practice. So in meridian theory, the liver and the gallbladder meridian run on the, in, the liver on the inside of the leg as well as the gallbladder on the outside. We do a lot of hip opening in our yin yoga. So we'll be really opening uh, the energy of all the meridians but we're particularly focusing with our intention um, in this springtime on the gallbladder and the liver meridian. So we don't need to know too much about the theory. If you're interested in this more, you can uh, come to an in-person retreat that uh, my partner, Glenn Polly, and I offer here in Tara Springs in central Victoria, Australia, where we dive much deeper into both meridian theory as well as nourishing food and understanding um, how we can really harness the wisdom of these seasons and the meridians in our body. But for now, this is just a taster. So as I do with all my yoga, the important thing is that we can call in an intention, but also notice our emotional being and our emotional body and welcome all of these emotions. So the emotion that can be associated with springtime and the liver meridian can be the emotion of anger if um, our emotions are a little stuck or our energy in our body is not flowing. Um, and then when we do our yin yoga postures, if those emotions arise, any emotion, we welcome them in to our practice with a mindfulness, with a, a deep love and respect and allow the magic of the postures and the practice to transmute and transform emotion. So the flip side of anger is compassion. So we want to always weave in compassion for self, compassion for other as we're practicing. So you may like to just tune in for a moment, maybe closing your eyes or soft gaze looking to the ground or the floor in front. You can raise your hands to the center of your chest. And I invite you to just take a few breaths here at your heart space. To start to notice your beautiful heart. Maybe deepening that breath, expanding the lungs, the chest. And invite you to reflect on what would you like, what's your desire and what would you be liking to call in for the year ahead? This is a time when we can plant the seeds of our intention for the year. We had a 
garden, we can also be planting the seeds for our food crops, for our flowers. It's a season of great growth, a time of year that we can plant these powerful intentions that we can then nourish and nurture over the year with our yoga. What do you desire? What are you calling into your life? Just listen to that intuitive, heartfelt sense. So the gallbladder meridian can also be about the plans and the implementation. So how are we going in implementing our visions and our dreams? There may be blockages in the way, whether that be external or internal. And again, we can bring our awareness of this into our practice if we notice areas of our body that feel tight or constricted. This is where the practice can bring the focus to the body and to our intention. Beautiful. We're going to come to our first posture, the butterfly. So bringing the soles of our feet together, knees apart, just play with the distance of the feet. You may like to have them in close to the groin or a little further out. As you do that, just notice the difference. When it's closer in, it might be a deeper stretch through the inside. As it's out, maybe a stretch more through the outer thighs and the glutes. So just finding a position that feels comfortable. And let's just begin with some gentle movement. So the butterfly. Allowing the wings of your butterfly, your knees, just to gradually bring this little repetitive movement up and down, just letting it be gentle and natural. As you start to do this, just notice how that feels in the hips. It's a gentle warm up for our hips. You can close your eyes if that's comfortable, or looking to the ground, the floor, below, in front, just for a soft gaze so that we're looking inwards, just looking to the screen if you need to, to clarify position, change of position. But this is your practice. Breathing, maybe letting the wings fly a little more vigorously or if it's nice to just stay really gentle and just do what you is right for your body. The invitation in these practices are to really listen to your body. If something doesn't feel right, then make adjustments or do a different posture. Beautiful. Just letting your breath be natural. If you need to, letting out a sigh or sound. Oh. Softening through the shoulders, the jaw. Beautiful. And gradually just letting the wings of your butterfly come to stillness. Like they're landing. Landing onto the earth. Pausing for a few breaths. Spine nice and tall. And then begin to just tilt forward from the hips, hinging forward at the hips. So we start with a nice tall spine, tilting forward so we start to engage an opening through this lower back, starting to maybe feel the engagement through the inner thighs. And coming to a depth that feels comfortable, just a little bit of a stretch. We don't need to come all the way forward. In yin yoga, we want to start Nice and gently. So it's a gentle engagement, bringing your awareness and your breath to where you're feeling the sensations. If you wish to, you can use your bolster as a little head prop. So you turn your bolster on the side, resting your forehead. This way you can allow the whole body to feel supported. The base and the legs are supported by the earth head supported by the bolster and your hands gently placed on the ground allowing the shoulders to begin to relax. 
take a nice deep breath. Noticing where you feel the stretch. Imagine your breath traveling all the way into the body, to these areas, and on the exhale, letting go. We relax all effort, relaxing the muscles so that you can start to drop inward to the deeper connective tissue, which is where yin yoga focuses the tendons, the ligaments, these deeper tissues where the meridians travel through. Sensing the inside of the thighs, if you notice a stretch there, or the outer thighs, lower back, the hips, wherever you're feeling the engagement. Continue with your mindful awareness and breath Or if you feel or sense your body can go a little deeper, then just start to allow the body to come further forward. Again, finding your edge. There's no hurry in yin yoga. In fact, the slower, the better. Always being mindful if ever you feel a hot burning sensation, then please come up or out of the position. It can be a sign of an injurious position so we want to really listen we want enough of an edge that feels beneficial but not too deep where you're straining the body just allowing for these next few moments for your whole body to continue to surrender oh. Notice whatever's arising in your mental body, any thoughts, any feelings and emotions that might be arising. We notice with our breath and awareness and on each exhale, welcoming all that is, breathing. Inviting your body to soften each breath. Oh. These next few moments, just notice how the body feels from when you first came in the posture. Maybe the sensations have changed. Or maybe other parts of the body are in your awareness now. Notice, continuing to drop deeper, travelling inwards. You may want to dream into your intention for the year ahead. Beautiful. Slowly, slowly. We always move very slowly in and out of our yin postures. Lifting the upper body and slowly, slowly stretching your legs out, being gentle with your knees and coming to lie back in a reclined Shavasana. But we can also take our feet a little wider than traditional Shavasana and our arms a little wider so we create a little star with our body just to allow the whole body to just come back to a position of rest. Noticing your natural breath. If ever you need to, exhaling through the open mouth. Or it may be a steady inhale and exhale through the nose. Whatever feels natural for you. The next few breaths, just allow your whole body to relax, to let go of any effort. Beautiful. Very gently lifting the knees towards the chest. 
rolling onto your side, to come back up to sitting. So we're going to move to our next position, Twisted Balasana. So I'm going to do it side on as well as front on, just so that you can see, see this body shape. So this is going to be really working with the shoulders because we can hold a lot of this liver or bladder energy through the shoulders. So taking our knees wide apart, we're going to place our left hand on the floor in front. Taking our right arm, we're going to thread it through under the armpit, inside between the hand and the knee, lowering the right shoulder down on towards the floor, lowering our right cheek side of the head to the floor, and just leaving our left arm out in front. Now for some of us we may need a cushion or a pillow where we come down and we place the cushion or the pillow under our head. So notice for you, is it nice on the floor or if you feel like it's too intense or too deep, then try a block or a cushion. What we're wanting is to feel this arm, the right arm down on the ground. Beautiful, the hips are open. If this feels good and you feel you could go a little deeper, you can take your left arm to rest on your back, creating a little opening through the left shoulder as well. So we're coming to this position, starting to notice where do you feel this stretch. So the target area is the right arm, the right shoulder, the shoulder blade, also the hips, the thighs. But wherever you're feeling the stretch, that's your practice. So whilst it may be the general target area, if there's other areas that are feeling this engagement, then we listen to that, that this part of the body is really speaking to us. So we listen, we breathe with consciousness and awareness. And on each exhale, starting to let your body respond to the call of gravity. Your whole body is supported. Natural breath. If ever feels too much in the shoulder, you can come out and rest in Shavasana. And also noticing if you end up, if you feel you are cutting off circulation and your fingers become pins and needles, don't stay in this position for too long. You want to come out and rest, not cutting off the circulation. One more minute on this side, noticing this stretch and opening through the shoulder. Oh, maybe through the neck, through the hips and the buttocks, wherever you're feeling sensations, breathe into them. And on each exhale, imagine and cultivate this sense of letting go. Oh. Beautiful. Very, very gently starting to release by lifting the upper body, releasing the arm, and we're going to come to lie on our belly, forward facing Shavasana. So coming down, making a little pillow with the hand your forehead, or if you wish, taking your head to the side. Either way, finding a comfortable position, come for a few deep breaths. And that deep breath all the way down to the belly, the exhale, letting go. Next 
gently really come up to change sides. So this time we bring the right hand to the floor, threading our left arm, lowering the left shoulder to the floor, the left cheek, wide knees, right arm out in front if that's comfortable or if you want to deepen the posture a little, taking it to rest over the back. And just coming to your position, making any little adjustment if you need to. So the most important thing is that we are comfortable and supported in our yin yoga. We want to be feeling an engagement, but enough of an engagement that we can stay present, that we're comfortable, that we're not injuring our body. If ever you feel it's a little too much, you might even want to lift. You could place blankets under you to lessen the depth if you need to. Once we find our comfortable position, <clears throat> We notice the breath, the sensations in our body. Oh. Noticing it may feel quite different on this side. Often our tensions we hold in our body are not symmetrical. So if one side is quite different, you may need more props or adjust the shape a little. Oh. Scanning through the body, just noticing what's arising in the physical sensations. And allow our beautiful breath to engage with our body. And on each exhale, with our awareness throughout the body, starts to surrender a little more. Noticing the thoughts, our mind, any emotions that may be arising. We don't resist, we allow with a gentle, compassionate understanding, curiosity. Softening through the face and the jaw particularly the jaw for our hips, there's a direct connection between the hips and the jaw, so as we're opening through the hips, be mindful of the jaw and allow it to be soft and softening. Again, you might want to bring your awareness to your intention for the year ahead. What do you desire? What's your vision for yourself, for your community, for your family, for society? You can be really creative. It doesn't need to feel like a reality. It's a vision. It's what we may be working to in this lifetime. Each year, each month. Each season is an opportunity to continue to work towards our life's vision, our life's mission. Mission. So just for a few more moments, just allow your body to soften as much as you can. Like we melt towards the earth, kissing Mother Earth with our practice this beautiful spring energy. Beautiful. Slowly, slowly lifting the upper body and again coming forward to rest on our belly. We always come to the resting pose between each posture. Taking a few deep breaths all the way down to the belly.
returning to the body, noticing how the practice has been so far for you. Notice which parts of the body feel open, maybe they're the opening of some energy, some warmth, or some tingling. Very gently starting to come back up to sit in. We have time for one more posture. We're going to get our bolster. We have a bolster or a folded, a folded blanket into the shape of a round. We're going to bring our soles of our feet together again. Knees in a wide knee butterfly shape. Bringing the uh, base of the uh, bolster all the way to our coccyx, to our tailbone. And we're going to start to take our back to recline back along our bolster. Placing the head on the bolster if that feels too deep. You again may like to use a block or a cushion as a little pillow just to allow you to not recline too deeply at first. It may be that we start here and then during the posture remove the block to deepen if we wish to. So just notice as you first come back into your position where are you noticing the stretch through the inner thighs, through the outer thighs, the glutes. And with our arms out nice and wide, you may feel an opening through the chest, through the arms, all the way out to the fingertips. Closing your eyes or soft gaze, whatever's more comfortable for you. Beginning to notice your breath, breathing into wherever you're noticing the opening through the body, feeling the support of your bolster, the earth below, relaxing through the neck and the shoulders, the face, the jaw. Breaths, feeling the chest expanding. Feeling your heart space expanding. Sensing all the potential of springtime. When we look to the wisdom in the garden in Mother Nature, the immense growth that this phase of the year offers us. Continue just breathing and noticing wherever the body is opening, whatever sensations are arising, just allowing each breath to nourish the body, to open the flow of your energy through the web of connective tissue and the wisdom of your meridian. Just a few more moments, maybe just noticing how the body feels compared to when you first came in this position. The more we practice our yin yoga, the more familiar our body will be with these shapes. And the deeper we can go in our practice. Beautiful. And slowly when you're ready, just stretching those legs out or moving in whatever way you can safely release from this posture, rolling off to the side of the bolster and just moving the bolster off to the side so we can again recline into a Shavasana to finish our practice today. 
lying back on the earth, palms facing up slightly inwards, feet a hip width apart. Taking some nice, deep, nourishing breath. If as you find you come to this resting, you need to move your body a little, particularly that lower back has been getting a deep stretch on the bolster. So you might want to hug the knees or move them side to side just to release through that lower back or any part of the body that might need the release. And then again, coming back to your Shavasana. So we take this time in Shavasana to integrate the practice, to allow the body to come back to a centered, resting, balanced position. You might notice parts of the body that have received the stretches. And just allow the whole body to take a few moments to integrate the changes that the physical postures have offered, as well as our mental and emotional body. stillness, your natural breath. So if you choose to, you may like to stay a little longer in Shavasana. Or if you feel to and you're ready to come back to the waking world, Using your time to come up to a sitting position. Beautiful. I hope you have a beautiful day. And watch out for each season, there's a new video. So we have the five seasons in the Meridian Theory. The next season will be summer. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel because then you can be notified of when the new practices are available. And please share with friends and family, anyone who you know enjoys yoga or would benefit from these practices. So namaste, lots of love.